After months of waiting, the 2024 schedule is officially here. I'm Tori McElhaney, joined by Dave Archer, and this is your Atlanta Falcons schedule release show brought to you by Ticketmaster. You know, we could have gone through every single game and droned on and on about each matchup, but that doesn't seem fun now, does it, Arch? No, let's not do that. No, no, we're going to go through this 2024 schedule release a little different. We have themes, we have categories, and we're going to peel back the layers of the Falcons' 2024 schedule. Arch, you ready for this? It's game time, baby. Let's look at it. Okay, Arch, big picture. From an overall perspective, what is schedule at least like for players? I mean, I know from a social media standpoint, we have so many things that we're looking at and Honestly, guys have been working nonstop upstairs. But for you, if you're playing, what is this day about? So often this frames what, what the schedule looks is the schedule frames what the season looks like. Because for for all of us, we begin to think, okay, we know who we're playing, but it's like a puzzle all kind of jumbled up on you and it hadn't been put together yet, and it's sitting on your table and you kind of think, ah, don't really want to mess with it. Then somebody comes in and puts the puzzle together for you and say, Wow, now I see it. Mm-hmm. The season's real. Yeah. Let's provide that information. All right, so we're going to take a look at the first six weeks of the season. You ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. It's going to be very nice. Here we see, again, like I said, the first six games of the season. In this stretch, the Falcons are looking at a doozy of a start to the season with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Kansas City Chiefs at home. Philadelphia on the road for Monday Night Football. More on that later. And, of course, the NFC South. There's some rivals up in this. No question about it. When you begin to look at this, that's where your eyes kind of train. You see who you're playing first. Yep. Arthur Smith, by the way, the offensive coordinator <laughs> of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Don't think there wasn't some thought process that went into that mm-hmm. to provide the Steelers as the Falcons opening day game. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Falcon fans, <laughs> you get a light it up on week one. Then you drop to Philly. Philly's a team that's been in the Super Bowl. You look at Kansas City. Two teams were in the Super Bowl just two years ago. But where my eyes go, Tori, mm-hmm. bang. Bang, bang. This one, yep. Three in a row, divisional opponents, and you know as well as I do, fans, that that's how you get yourself in the playoff. Go win your division. Three divisional games in the first six games of the year. Okay, let's hone in a little bit on this week one home opener over here. This is obviously the Falcons will host the Pittsburgh Steelers at home on September 8th at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Arch, like what you said, this is a very, very intriguing matchup. Arthur Smith returning to Mercedes-Benz as the Pittsburgh Steelers OC. Now we've got some other Falcons that are going to be returning too. Cordero Patterson, just to name one off the top. Now, let's not even get into the whole quarterback conversation yeah. in Pittsburgh, but what really excites you about this matchup right here? Well, certainly the Steeler brand is one that there will be some Steeler fans wandering around trying to get in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Let's keep the terrible towel outside if we can. Let's take care of that. But this Steeler team comes in. Arthur Smith is the offensive coordinator, comes in. Mike Tomlin's team, who will be the quarterback? You're talking about, you mentioned the quarterback scenario. Russell Wilson, Justin Fields will both be in camp with his team. We're assuming it's Russell Wilson, but but I'm sure Fields will have something to say about it. But this is a team that can flat get after you on the defensive side of the football. We know Watt's going to be coming off the edge. This will be a game that both these teams are fully healthy, no injuries of that scenario. So you're expecting Kirk Cousins. Lighten it up against T.J. Watt. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Now let's pull back a little bit to the, the six games to start the season again. Now you know what I love. I love a good challenge. There are a lot of challenging mm. opponents. I mean, just looking at you have former Super Bowl contenders. You have the Super Bowl, the reigning Super Bowl champion. Two time. Yeah, week three. Now if you're kind of looking at this, if I'm looking at it week two, week three, week four, and week five, this to me, and I know we're just talking about the start of the season, this is the hardest stretch of the entire season. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I think there's any question about the fact that you've got games that are lined up against uh, divisional opponents we talked about. But think about the quarterback play. We talked about the first game. Mm-hmm. You're going to get a guy that's won a Super Bowl probably in, in Russell Wilson. This guy took his team to a Super Bowl two years ago. This guy's got three Super Bowl trophies, okay? Yeah. Then you go to Derek Carr, who's a veteran quarterback. And, oh, by the way, Baker Mayfield just yep. came back from a player returning player of the year type scenario. So, uh, or comeback player of the year. So, you start talking about quarterback play in the first six weeks of the season, you've got some stiff competition. You really do. Now, let's move forward a little bit. We've been t- talking a lot about these first six weeks of the season. I kind of want to get into the next six weeks. And there are a lot of really interesting opponents here kind of leading up to this week 12 bye. What do you kind of make of this? Look, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Saints all over again. Yeah, and, and that's what jumps out. Again, Tori, when we begin to start thinking about the schedule, where are the divisional opponents? And so, boom, there, here comes Tampa. Here comes New Orleans again in this block that you picked out. Dallas Cowboys sandwiched in three road games 
in a five game for uh, in a four week stretch there with the Cowboys sandwich in 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 the Mercedes Benz Stadium. But it's the divisional games you're looking at. You also begin to think, okay, what does the quarterback matchup look like? A couple of guys we know about, Dak Prescott, outstanding player, mm-hmm. could see Bo Nix right here in Week 11 before you get into the bye. So interesting matchups and a big point of the season where you're starting to really try to gain ground and maybe go win a division. Yeah, this is what I'm calling the grind of the season. And mm. October always is, but this is this is it. Now, Week 12 bye, we're talking about the last week of yeah. November here. What do you kind of make a, of this bye week and, and where it falls? It's not horrible. It's not the best. Mm-hmm. I think you'd like to try to settle in that 9-10 range yeah. you know, from, from a bye standpoint. But I think that uh, it's, it's, it's doable. We've had worse you know, you and I were talking about when we got ready to do this, that we've had worse. We've had it really early really or really early, late. Yeah. So this is kind of middle of the road to a certain extent, a little bit later than I'd like to see. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look now. Let's go to the next group. Let's go after the bye week because there is a really interesting group of, of, of teams right here and something that I'm really interested in. Look, like we all know that the NFC South is usually make or, make or made or broken in these weeks. But what's so interesting – the Falcons that have already played a lot of these guys, the only team that they have right here in the NFC South is at week 18. It's the final game of the season. What do you kind of uh, make of that and how it could honestly change the scope of what we're looking at in this chunk of games? It's very different than we've seen in recent years. No question about it. The NFL likes to backload divisional games in the back end of your schedule. Mm-hmm. That they didn't do that. We only get Carolina. In fact, Five of your six division games happen from week 10 and earlier. This is the only divisional game, as Tori just pointed out. Yeah. But when you begin to think about playing Carolina at the end of the season, mm-hmm. how much impact will that have at that point? So you're going to have to make up some ground. And I think that that's an area where we feel like young quarterbacks, you start talking about potentially uh, J.J. McCarthy on the field. You're talking about Aiden O'Connell on the field for the Raiders. You're talking about some younger quarterbacks. So you get some veteran guys early. And then maybe late in the year, you're going to get first and second year quarterbacks that maybe you can take advantage of. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about that and zoom back out those final six weeks of the season. This is what I am calling right through here, week 15 through about week 18 is what I am calling a chance for the Falcons to build the resume. A chance to get some wins on the board in case you haven't already gotten there yet. But this is a chance to make a run. This is this week, this final push towards the end of the season. What do you kind of like about the matchups here? Well, again, I kind of, I'm leaning towards the quarterback and how important he is in the National Football League. Aiden O'Connell being his second year with the Raiders uh, and they're trying to, to, to fashion something there. Daniel Jones is coming off an injury. Remember, he missed almost all of last year with an injury. Jalen, uh, Jaden Daniels, the rookie, <laughs> will be out there with, with the commanders. And then, of course, Bryce Young, who really struggled last year, you're thinking that he's going to be a better player, certainly in week 18 of his second season. I don't know if you can call him a young quarterback <laughs> at that point, having played all those games, but still a young player, only his second year. So two second-year guys, a first-year guy, and a guy coming off injury. So it might be one of those scenarios where you're, you're, maybe you can get after the quarterback a little bit, but still, this is the National Football League, and all these guys will be dialed in. Yeah, it's really interesting because – Honestly, I tend to say by week four, week five is when you know the identity of your team. By this point, you should be running on all cylinders, firing on all cylinders, if I should say. So something that I'm really excited about, I don't know about you, but we've got some primetime games, Arch. There are four. The Falcons literally went from having none last year, not a single one, to now there's four. We've got week two. It's a Monday night game at Philadelphia. We have week four. Five over here, we got Tampa Bay. I believe that is also a Thursday night game. Mm-hmm. Week three, Sunday night game against the Kansas City Chiefs, reigning uh, Super Bowl champions. And then you'll wrap it up week 15, which is also another Monday night game. So you have two Monday night games, a Thursday and a Sunday. What do you like about a primetime game? Well, the thing I like about when you start talking about the road games, obviously in your same time zone. So not as, not as difficult to, to deal with a Monday night game. Now, one thing that's interesting is you've got Monday night, Sunday night, right back to back. So they, took, they did you a little bit of a solid and pushed that Sunday game to the evening. So mm-hmm. you get a little bit of recovery time off a of Monday night game. The Thursday night games are always a pain in the rear end for players <laughs> to try to get ready right. because you've just had a short week prior to – and, and you get New Orleans, or I mean, you get Tampa Bay. And then, of course, the travel to Vegas. Where are you in that situation? That might be a huge game for the, for the Falcons to yeah. have to go out and win uh, in Las Vegas uh, out there to take care of the Raiders. So I like the fact that we're back in prime time. 
and it under, you understand why because of quarterback matchups. You got uh, you know you've got Kirk Cousins against Jalen Hurts, against Patrick Mahomes, against Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are really primetime matchups. All right, well, let's zoom back out. Let's look at this entire schedule for a second. And Arch, I'll give you this last word. When you're looking at this 2024 schedule, and I'm not going to ask you for wins or anything like that. We're so far ahead. We're just in OTAs right now. We're just getting into mandatory minicamp in a couple weeks. But as you're looking at this 2024 schedule, what excites you about what the Falcons could do in this year? Well, the first thing, and it gets back to what we've talked about right at the beginning, we now have a face on our opponent and win, right? We knew who we were going to play, but now we know win as the puzzle now is put together Four games of the first five are at home. Yeah. An opportunity for you as fans to pack Mercedes-Benz Stadium and have a major effect on what this team potentially could look like as you get after two divisional opponents in the first six weeks of the season, four, five, and six. You get those those uh, those divisional opponents. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that you're going to be able to get a foothold in the division. And then as you push forward, that middle part we talked about, got a couple more divisional games there. And in the back end, some young quarterbacks that maybe you can take advantage of. So I think it sets up well. Nobody has an easy schedule. Let me no. talk about easy schedules. It doesn't exist in the National <laughs> Football League. This is very doable for the Falcons, I believe. All right. Well, that'll do it for Arch and I. Thanks for ringing in the 2024 schedule release with us. This has been the Atlanta Falcons schedule release show brought to you by Ticketmaster.